Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 71 of Generation GC. Awful things. Good Charlotte's cover of the Little Peep song. My name is Molly Louise Huddleston once again, and as always, I am your host, as well as the producer, creator, and editor of this show. My guest today is Keeper, the uh, music moniker of Emmanuel Andrade. On our last regular episode, we talked about Harlow's song from Cardiology. In two weeks, that's July 21st, folks, we'll be talking about a song from Youth Authority. Coming all the way from the UK is emo rap artist Emmanuel Andrade, who goes by the stage name Keeper. Manny also plays guitar in the London-based pop-punk band Jack the Envious. Keeper released the Guess I'm Keeper EP this March, and while it's a solo EP, it did present a lot of opportunities to collaborate with a bunch of his friends in the music industry. I had a lot of fun talking to Keeper about this EP, as well as his own musical background. He's a big Lil Peep fan and a big Good Charlotte fan, so he really was the perfect person to have as a guest on this episode. I also wanted to give a content warning for this episode on addiction and drug use, as well as suicide. We don't get particularly graphic about anything, but it is relevant to the song and to Lil Peep and his connection with Good Charlotte. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll go into some of that in the episode, and, and if you're familiar, you probably know a little bit of what to expect, but I wanted to give you a heads up. And I'll put all of this in the show notes, but I wanted to read some hotlines, some information for you. If you're in the U.S., you can call 1-800-273-TALK or text HOME to 741-741 for crisis text line. If you're struggling with substance abuse, you can call the SAMHSA hotline, which is 1-800-662-4357. In Canada, you can call the crisis assistance hotline, that is 833-456-4566. In the U.K., you can call Samaritans, that is 116 one two three or text shout to eight five two five eight and another option in the uk is adaction which is a web chat service for addiction support addaction.org.uk slash web chat uh, and the last resource that i will mention is to write love on her arms their website twloha.com click find help and they'll help you find resources in your area once again, all of those will be listed in the show notes for you. I also wanted to say that I love having guests from all around the world and from all different backgrounds represented on Generation GC. If English wasn't your first language, that's okay. As long as you're comfortable holding a conversation in English, you're good to go. And I always send out notes ahead of time, so you'll have some time to prepare and think about what you might want to say. And by the way, different backgrounds does not just mean location or ethnicity. It also means ensuring a varied gender and sexuality representation, representing fans of different ages from all walks of life. You know, I, I want everyone who listens to this show to feel like their own life experiences are represented. And hey, maybe if you don't feel like that, I don't know, hit me up and maybe I can have you as a guest someday because I, I want us all to feel connected. I want to feel like a community. I also want to continue mentioning blacklivesmatters.card.co, antisemitism.card.co, and antiasianviolenceresources.card.co, and those will all be linked in the show notes. Finally, Generation GC stickers are here. If you do want stickers, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can support the show on Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash generation GC pod and click support. And that helps me keep the show going. It helps me do things like buy headphones or laptop risers or whatever kind of cables I need. Also helps me print and ship the stickers. Number two, go to blacklivesmatters.card.co and donate to any of the charitable organizations listed there. It's going to make a really big difference whatever you can afford to give. And then you're going to send me a screenshot of either your support of the show on Anchor or your charitable donation, as well as your mailing address, and I will send you stickers. Thank you all for tuning in. And now on to episode 71. So, uh, Awful Things is a cover song, actually. The original song was by Lil Peep uh, and also features Lil Tracy. Lil Peep, for anyone not familiar, Lil Peep was basically a pioneer of this emo rap genre a couple years ago. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. his first mixtape came out in 2015. He had an EP, another mixtape. Uh, this song was included on his debut album, Come Over When You're Sober, Part 1, which was released in 2017, and it was actually his third highest charting single in the U.S., 
it reached number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100, um, debuting on the chart not long after Lil Peep unfortunately passed away November 15th, 2015. 2017 of an accidental overdose. Um, there have been a ton of posthumous Lil Peep releases. I guess there was a lot of stuff he was working on, and I don't know, we can maybe in a little bit get into kind of the ethics of uh, posthumous releases and all that, but he was definitely a very prolific artist um, in, in terms of like how long his professional career lasted. But this video, the original Lil Peep video, has almost 237 million views on YouTube. It's probably reached that by now, by the time we're recording. Um, the song has been streamed about 227 million times on Spotify. And we're talking about this today because Good Charlotte covered awful things for Lil Peep's memorial, which the actual memorial took place December 2nd, 2017 in Long Beach, New York. But I think, and Manny, like, I'm, I'm curious if you have, like, thoughts either way. I think they filmed this separately because I'm pretty sure they were on tour in the UK at the did. time. Yeah. 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 So I think this uh -oh. was filmed separately. Um, and then they released the song a few weeks later. And here I will read what they said. Every now and then a new artist comes along who you know is sure to change music. Lil Peep was one of those artists. We were excited to find out that we shared a love of the same bands and that he was a fan of GC. We looked forward to the possibility of touring together in the new year, so that would have been 2018, by the way, and we're excited to share our stories and even make some music together. There is a feeling of hope and rebellion in this music, in his music, which, big relation to Good Charlotte, right? Yeah, For everyone yeah. who feels like <laughs> they might not fit in, that we relate to, and that shares a kinship to what GC has always been about. Absolutely. Um, this rendition of Awful Things was done with love for Pete, his family, and fa friends and fans to celebrate his life, talent, and career, and we hope everyone enjoys it as much as we enjoyed making it. Thanks for all the love you shared, Peep. You are missed, but through your art, you will live forever. Beautiful sentiment. It really was. Very touching towards the end. Yeah. yeah I, I think, because those guys have obviously been through quite a bit themselves. Yeah. yeah so... It really showed that in the last statement. I feel like they kind of saw Peep as maybe like a little brother, kind of. Oh, no, don't. Oh, dear. I know. Oh, I know. I know. Up, this is probably going to be emotional. We're three minutes in and you're tearing me up. I know. Um, I believe the only time Good Charlotte played this cover was, like, live was uh, for the m memorial. Um, Setlist.fm says that Lil Peep played it 16 times on tour in 2017, including the night before he passed away. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, I think, a, a song, an artist. And I was even looking on Spotify. It looks like a couple other people have covered this song, right? Um, definitely something that has big left one its mark. for him. I think it was the last... Oh, dear. No, now we're asking. I want to say it's one of the last ones he released before he unfortunately passed, I believe. Yeah, I mean, because I think the album was the last thing that he released yeah. before he passed. And that was one of the lead singles for it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, dear. Manny, I we have a lot to get into with Peep and Good Charlotte and, and Peep and, and all of that, but uh, I want to help listeners get to know you, get to know Keeper. Um, so the first thing I like to ask everyone is, when did you first hear Good Charlotte and what were your first thoughts on them? Okay, so... Me and my sister, same sort of age group. I'm 1998. She's 1999. So, you know, growing up in the car, we both, y your parents put on music like Baby Shark because you're a kid, if you're a kid nowadays, obviously. But I don't think you sort of, you're aware it's music and what it is as music. You know, it's all squiggly sound waves, but right. you're not, you, you know, really sure of it. So me and my sister sort of came into consciously listening to music around the same sort of time and my parents had um a De La Soul album in the car they had um so very st stereotypical they had the uh the, the the big good charlotte one and it was girl girls and boys they had a busted album they had rage against the machine that was a big one for me they had De La Soul bill withers and we would and some a uk band called athlete i think so it was around that sort of time, uh, yeah, The Young and the Hopeless was the album. And that was the sort of the time I was like, ah, oh, I like this. This sounds pleasing to my ears. Yeah. Let's do more of this. 
and you know it's obviously busted in the uk were huge at the time you could not escape them to be honest with you and it was that sort of time and although they have loads of bangers on that album i want to say it's like their big it's their main album i, I want to say one of their big ones um the one that i can remember consciously listening to at that sort of age is uh, girls and boys just the girls and boys I, that is been stuck in my head for like 20 22 years at this yeah. point it is it is that is the conscious one me and my sister singing that in the car next to the year 3000 and michael Amazing. Jackson. <laughs> that was it. Amazing. well i also like to ask have you ever seen good charlotte live i've only seen them once and that was with the uk band i'm a big fan of boston manor okay boston manor and they did a tour in 2018 it was the uk tour um yeah. with sleeping with sirens i think the counterpart to sleeping with sirens uh sorry boston manor in the um, north america was the dos the the uh the uh it was like a grunge band because i remember yeah it was the, I saw on the Robbie dos. Downey Jr.'s instagram that he was at the gig <laughs> for good charlotte i was like yeah, it was the U.S. tour when Generation RX came out was Sleeping with Sirens, Knuckle Puck, and The Dose. Oh, I love that Knuckle Puck. Yeah. Good band, good band. Yeah, it was quite a lineup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I want to talk about Keeper. So you released this EP, Guess I'm Keeper, in March. And it looks like, I mean, per Spotify, it looks like that was your first release as Keeper. Yes. Yeah. I wrote it in... Um, this time last year, and I just was not able to get it out. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because everything was going wrong. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to get it out next year, which I'm glad I, I have because now I've got stuff ready to come out. I've got like a, sm there's a small break between stuff now. It's very yeah. exciting. I'm very excited. So uh, between like band stuff as well. Yeah. So you're also in a band, um, yes. Jack the Envious. Mm -hmm. What made you want to start Keeper? What made you want to start this project? Well, I've liked this music for a while and the other guys are slightly that older. They might not have been aware of things going on. Like, uh, cause we've got some great artists like bad girls TV in the UK, small indie two do two or three dudes. And they slap, they slap, they, they incorporate like old school punk, UK punk grunge. Cool. With, emo trap uh, and i've always been sort of into this genre of music obviously de la soul was an album i loved nwa uh, my dad used to play on snoop dogg all the time rage against the machine that sort of rap rock things mm -hmm. and then i got into um uh what are they called with jason from let live uh fever 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 That's 333 it. yeah 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 I, I was a big fan of let uh let live um J J i mean jason's amazing Let's i saw them he's slaps i saw let live one time it was like the wonder years microwave and let live oh my god Whoa. it was like i happened to have a night off on tour when the wonder years were an hour away <laughs> so he just like drove um and I hadn't even listened to Let Live. Like, I, I just knew that Jason had this reputation as, like, a totally insane front man and it did not disappoint. Like, he's incredible. I used to play in grunge bands and I used to try and imitate him. Yeah. And I, the amount of amps I broke just throwing... We, okay, I have a really... The amount of grunge in the UK uh, sort of punk bands, like, sort of really bad Sex Pistols covers. We... um. We used to just do random things. So we'd throw guitars at each other on stage, you know, aim, try and aim with the cymbals. It was, <laughs> it was, that was me and the drummer. The other two dudes didn't really do it, but me and the drummer used to have a lot of fun. Used to have a lot of fun. Uh, I remember getting <laughs> quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of, um, you know, can I swear? Yes, yes, this, yeah. Okay, I remember getting quite a bit of shit, <laughs> to be honest, for like knocking over mics and <laughs> swinging my guitar around. Got a couple of dents and things. Yeah. Just trying to are, imitate him. It was great. Are you a Taking Back Sunday fan? Ah, oh, that was sort of, I didn't fully get into them until later. I've only, I've indulged in them. You know, I've listened to a couple of tracks. I've never really full taken the deep dive head first into taking back sunday adam adam lazara has this like for many years i don't think i saw them i think 2012 was probably the first time i saw them and you know a handful of times since then but he 
has this reputation of like swinging the mic. And Uh, I I don't even mean just like, you know, around in a circle. Like I have this picture of him that, uh, that I took in like 2016 probably. And it is like, the whole frame of the picture, like halfway across the stage, the microphone cable. Um, and I talent. guess some people I don't know how they do it. didn't like that. I yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. And they're able to control it at the same time. It's, it's, it's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk about this music video and song that you have called Frog. So, okay, yes. I heard that you wrote this song while sitting next to a frog. Is that true? It's not as good as it was a wooden frog. It okay. was a wooden frog. Okay. But then people started saying it was a real frog. And I'm like, I ain't going to say anything against that. Yo, if you want to run with it, get your trainers on, shoot up the, like, go for it, go for it. I love it. I love it. But it was a wooden frog. It was one of those, you know, brr, 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 one of those. Uh, I was writing with a mate. I do a lot of my music with a mate. Um, we sure. started doing it from Minecraft. That was like the big thing. It was, he's in another band, post-hardcore, sort of metalcore band called As Everything Unfolds. They're blowing up. They just released an album. They got like 200,000 monthly listeners. Amazing. They're like doing download. They're blowing up. But I do it with him. And we came across a Minecraft. Uh, it was through a mate, mutual mate, Ben, who is a grumpy git. <laughs> right? Grumpy git, 33. Stop swearing, you know. Pick yeah. up the pigs and things like that. We, <laughs> we joined, we're similar age, me and John Cass from it. And um, we're like, oh, we're interested in similar music. He does production, things like that for um, rap artists and things like that. And obviously I play guitar and I love that sort of stuff as well. Like um, uh, Scarlord, uh, just, or Suicide Boys, Ghost Main, I love that stuff. And I was like, cool, I, I'm good with metal. I've got a seven string guitar. I can do Spanish, I can do blues. I'll write you guitar samples. So I used to write in guitar samples. I send them over and this one, I wrote a pop punk one, I sent it over, and he sent it back. Because he sends the back like, oh, this is what I made. I'm going to sell this. And he sells them. I was like, I love that. Can I buy that from you? And he's like, yeah, sure. We'll split it 50-50. So, so then it was, so it was dirt cheap, to be honest. Because obviously I helped him out before. He helps me out. That's the sort of thing we do. And it just started from there. Like as soon as lockdown ended, we went there, wrote a bunch of songs with the guitar. I was learning to do beats at that time. I'm still, I can still you know i'm still learning i guess you never stop learning but yeah you know, getting ideas i record them in my own space here with drums like boom, real drums and things like that um and so we wrote frog in his place and it was just a lot of fun we ended up then getting ben who owned the minecraft server because he plays drums and he's a videographer he wrote all the drums for it recorded the drums at his house he sent over the drum files just for that huge ending because i mm-hmm. love the way the drum sounds at the end that's the favorite thing it's my favorite one of the ep it's my favorite yeah. one I, I'm, I'm curious, like, how is it different for you writing songs, you know, in a band versus writing songs like as Keeper? Like, is that a different process at all? I really like writing with other people. Okay, so with the band, you sort of, you have to write with the band. You, you right. can only work with those four people. More or less, those are the boundaries you're set, the parameters you can set. You can only write with those four people. Doing this, I'm like, I want to write with somebody else. So, big thing for me is just getting mates who might not even be in the genre just to cut, like team up with some guitar come up with some weird samples most of the time it doesn't really work but it's a lot of fun just to really like just to have another insight i write for the for instance i write lyrics with my sister out of nowhere i wasn't so much this last e- the ep that's just released but with the new one i started just for a bit of fun just for a different sort of in I get to work with as many people as I want. I'm not really subjugated to who I have around me. It's just if I have a mate living in Scotland, and I do, I send him guitar samples. He sends me guitar samples back. It's more, I'm considering Keeper, I guess, as a musical experiment for me, just to Mm. work with everyone I'd like to work with. I don't really take myself very seriously. I never really have. And so I get to produce music that I might not (laughs) sort of take seriously. (laughs) I, I like that, though, and I, I think, I, I mean, it, it sounds like you just have a lot of freedom to kind of work with whoever you want to work with and, yeah. and explore things that you might not otherwise have thought of. I, I feel like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like in a band, let's say you have four or five people writing together, you might kind of be taking the average of everyone's influence versus okay, I'm just going to write with this person and this person and this person and this person and, and get to maybe 
pull some different things and not worry about, you know, what style it is so much. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's more, it's less limiting. It's more just expression for the sheer sake of expression. Yeah. That does that sound too pompous? No, I like that. I like that. Oh, wait, let me try it. Let me try it. It's uh, just sheer expression for the sheer except. I don't know. I was going to do a posh British accent, but I forgot how to do it. <laughs> oh, you're actually my second British guest on the show, by the way. Uh, last oi, summer, oi, Empire's back, baby. <laughs> last <laughs> summer, I had Chris Dowdy, who hosts a, po- a podcast called The Wasting Time Podcast, um, and we had a lot of fun because he he will drop good Charlotte references in like every episode of his podcast. <laughs> And I was Brilliant. like, this is someone I'm going to get along with. Um, I'll check them out. I've, I've just run onto their website now. I'll, I'll give them a listen. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about Lil Peep. So yeah. when you think of Lil Peep's music, like what, what comes to mind? Oh, it's very hard on his sleeve. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. I. Hmm. It was it's popular music, I guess. So it's radio. I guess you could. It's almost radio play music, but it's without the diluting, the defanging, the um. Because I feel like a lot of music, and this is definitely for some of my own. You write for the sake of writing without a purpose. Like yeah. I, I definitely have some songs which I prefer the writing. There's some other songs which I'm like, Ugh. I what was I thinking then? Um. And you write without a purpose just for it to get music out there. I feel like he did the complete opposite. I feel like every song he had, there was intentions, there was a goal, there was a storyline. Similar to Good Charlotte, because obviously Good Charlotte are incredible writers. Uh, Bloody Valentine uh, is about a guy who murders um, the boyfriend. That's cool as hell. That is cool as hell. I, you know, I... I sort of try to replicate that with some songs, but I'm not always able to, successful able to do that. Little Pete, Every single time he did it, he was successful. You know, yeah. it, he, he he had a skill. He had a talent. I, I definitely think he did. And I feel like, so I have a note here that I actually want to circle back to this at the end. At the end, we're going to circle back to some other Lil Peep tracks that we want to shout out that we think good Charlotte fans would like. So we'll save that okay. for the end. But yeah, I, I feel like he's... I don't want to say introspective because introspective to me, that implies that you are like thinking about the way you think. And I feel like peep is just like, I have something to say. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Um, And I think that very raw style, just like obviously really connected with people continues to connect with people, you know, several years Mm -hmm. since he passed. Yeah. It's, it's very unfiltered. It is. It's not something for the sake of something. It's this is little peep. You get what you get. You know. Yeah. Enjoy it or don't enjoy it. Yeah. Well, uh, Manny. So I had reached out to Jesse Lee um, when he sent me an email about the frog video, and I was just like, because I think he mentioned like little peep as you know, like little peep, neck deep, you know, for fans of. Um, and I was so excited that you were down to talk about this cover because I was like, all right, this is going to be someone that kind of knows both of these worlds of music so immediate thoughts immediate reactions like what what is your like what sticks out to you immediately about good charlotte's cover of awful things the drums opa like oh i'm a sucker for drums in Mm -hmm. any genre jazz funk oh funk drums man Mm, they're good they're good uh but good charlotte's drumming on that as soon as it comes in with a snare first and then for the chorus you got that boom boom it's it's it, it sort of <laughs> sort of beatboxing here <laughs> but the drums slap the drums are so good the drummer is so i know they've had you know they swapped a couple of drummers in, yeah. in the past but the drums on this slap the, the the guitar for the first verse i guess that you could say the where it's the spacing it's the mm, it's the su- there's a great deal of musicality to it it's yeah. you know i wouldn't say what they're doing is very difficult it's but it's not simple it is precise and it is there for a reason. As we were saying with Little Peep, the lyrics and, 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 the, and the brothers, their lyrics are there for a reason. For this, the instrumental is there for a reason. Everything is, has its own purpose, its own goal. 
And I just, I love that. Yeah, I really like that. It, it was put together, it seems like it was put together relatively quickly, like while they were, you know, on the road, yeah. but it it really almost feels like a good Charlotte song to me. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I sort of want to cover it. If we're, if we're ever allowed out to play gigs in the UK, oh dear, um, I'd love to cover it. I, there's yeah. two songs I want to cover, obviously, Busted, Year 3000, and, th- and that one. And that cover is because it then it's sort of tiring in tying in obviously the little Pete roots and the good Charlotte roots and it's just a banging yeah. song. I imagine live it would slap. I imagine it live would this slap. would like really go off. Yeah. 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 Um yeah. I have to just as you mentioned, busted year three thousand. Obviously in the US, the Jonas Brothers Jonas Brothers, yeah. Year three thousand cover was what was popular. What what is like your thought or like what do people in the UK think of the Jonas Brothers cover? Like is that like acknowledged at all? No, it's not. No one knows of it. It's it's really weird. I have a few quite a few friends in Canada and you know, uh, I did work ex- sort of work experience. I did volunteering work in Canada for a couple of months. I want everyone talking about sort of the year three they one of them shared a, sent a video on the facebook for the year 3000 for the jonas brothers i'm like oh slightly insulted but you know i i but no one in the uk knows knows of them the, obviously we know of the jonas brothers we love the jonas brothers in the uk uh they, they get a lot of play time on capital and like bbc radio one um I'm a big fan of the Jonas Brothers. I do like my Jonas Brothers, uh, but no one knows they 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 did Year Three Thousand as well. It's yeah. You can sort of see it is it is the it is you know the neighbouring force of the busted. You know three yeah. three dudes, uh, and then on the other side three brothers. Yeah, it, they're quite similar. Yeah. Well, I, I want to go back to awful things. Um, what, do you have any thoughts on why? Good Charlotte chose this track specifically to cover. I, I, I don't. I, I, if truly and honestly, I don't. The only thing I can think, I think, you know, such, uh, to be honest, I'm glad they did because the mm-hmm. cover is brilliant. The cover is amazing. And it's a great song anyway. The only thing I can think of, like, intention was that it was the main single. Yeah. And yeah, that sort of made sense for them to cover it. It was the most arguably if we're talking about singles, singles are obviously more important ones of a, an artist's career, I guess, you know, obviously there's some on the album that aren't singles, but they're the, you know, they're the, they're the big ones, they're the big names that people always sing back. Um, I guess it was also important to Little Pete and it's sort of, because it was a single, it may, I think it would make sense for Good Charlotte to do it as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It seems like it was a song that was just kind of being pushed at the time. Um, and I feel like there's an element, I, I feel like this song is, it, it sounds to me like on the surface, this song to me sounds like it's like kind of about maybe a t- like a toxic relationship. Yes. But I yeah, feel like yeah. there is, I feel like the relationship maybe isn't necessarily a- As straightforward as it seems. Right. Yeah. Well, may, maybe the toxic relationship is a metaphor for like a battle with addiction. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I know. Yeah, it's, um, that goes back to Little Pete's writing and Good Charlotte's right. writing. Exactly. They're able to exactly. the similes, the metaphors, the use of language. They're it's brilliant. They're really good. It's yeah. you know because I think Good Charlotte also did some writing for All Time Low as well, and those really songs so. slap. Those songs slap as well. Yeah, it, they're brilliant at what they do. Really good. Um, I would love to hear what is your favorite line from this song from Awful Things. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that's 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 a difficult. I'm gonna okay. So it's not Little Peep's line. I, as much as it, I, you know, this is a Little Peep Good Charlotte thing. It's not necessarily Little Peep's line. It's all Tracy's line. It's the um uh, the city in the rear view, heart racing whenever I'm near. It's the way that works mm-hmm. with the uh the music backing the instrumental it's i just like the way it's phrased and the delivery and the um I, for me I, I like that line i i have no other reason that i like the way it said i like the way it sang in this particular context with this particular delivery very you know caveman but that, i like that yeah <laughs> no. 
I I think my favorite is Burn Me Down Till I'm Nothing But Memories, That's just because one. it gives me such a visual. Yeah. Like, yes. burn me down. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Lil Peep's love of Good Charlotte. Uh, there's a tweet that I screenshotted. Uh, so this was June 2017 that he tweeted. He just tweeted without tagging, without context. Good Charlotte, my biggest influence. And it did numbers as well. Yeah. I'm looking at the uh, tweet now. 3.7K. <laughs> it did numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm a little curious, like, what in that moment made him go, ah, oh, right now I think I'm just going to tweet Good Charlotte, my biggest influence. Uh, maybe well, he was just was, listening to them. and Yeah. He's very hard, as we were saying earlier, very hard on his sleeves. Uh, you yeah. know, definitely yeah. didn't. I feel some people, some people, some, uh, I, they have guilty pleasures, you know. Yeah. And I'm, I don't think li- little people are somebody who had a guilty pleasure. Exactly. He liked what he liked because he liked it. You know, and some I, people like that's oh. a good Charlotte thing too. Like exactly, yes, yeah, yeah. I, it was unfiltered. I I have a thought. I have a. I mean, I, maybe this is like more my personal stance, but I, my feeling is that you're not allowed to like Good Charlotte as a guilty pleasure because if you feel weird or guilty about listening to Good Charlotte, like you don't really get it. Yeah, um, yeah. I I think there's also like music can be very snobbery as yes. well. It, yeah. it, it is it's for like i definitely there's some bands where i'm like oh, you like that band oh <laughs> yeah sort of like that but like you like that artist oh, you yeah. know but i think it's hard not to be you, you, you it's so full of division and music is very almost our personalities it's yeah. more than just squiggly airwaves it's and it's big, little Pete was like, yeah, this bangs. And um, I said it bangs. I don't care if you don't think it bangs. For me, it bangs. And yeah. good, oh, good Charlotte obviously does bang <laughs> as well. And I think, I think Good Charlotte is, okay, so my thing is bands get to a certain age. Okay. They, they're really popular. They then go to the, oh, they're big. They then get really big and they're like, oh, you like that band? They're so mm-hmm. big. They're not good anymore, you know? And then they get to, okay, these guys were good. These guys were sick. Forget what yeah. I was saying before. And I feel like Good Charlotte are in the middle between the, are they really, really big and, oh, you like them? And these guys bang. I don't care anymore. I'm expressing that. They're in that weird sort of stage at the moment, like a few bands are. I've, I've ran into, I mean, obviously this was still a couple of years ago, but like I... I would occasionally, because I got a lot of people when I was like in middle school, high school, kind of like making fun of me for loving Good Charlotte. Um, and then occasionally, you know, several years later, I would see one of those one of those people like at a show. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Or, or like when, when the hiatus came and all these people, when they came back from hiatus and all these people were like, I've loved Good Charlotte forever. And yeah, I'm like, have you? Know, you? Poser. Right. <laughs> right, right. Um, in terms of Pete, though, you know, I, I read a little bit about his background. Um, he struggled with suicidal thoughts. He had an absent father. So I, I can definitely see why Good Charlotte similarities. Yeah. would resonate with him. Um, I'm going to read quotes from two interviews that were not long before he passed. Uh, The first one is a a story by ID. And this story says, while he sings like a rapper, he's majorly influenced by melodies from American pop punk anthems and lyrical themes more akin to angsty mid 2000s email. Hello. Drawing from subcultures past and present to forge a new one of his own, Lil Peeps is the genre we didn't know we wanted, but we're very grateful for all the nostalgia and soul soothing it brings. Sorry, my dog's right next to me. No. Um, And then there was an interview with Paper Magazine, which supposedly was the final interview uh, before he passed. And the interviewer says, it's easy to tell that authenticity is a big thing with you. And he says, yeah, there's a lot of big artists that really want to work with me right now. I just don't want to do that whole thing of saying, I have this co-sign and I have a feature with this person, so I'm mainstream now. I'm just trying to build my own thing up with my own friends. Yeah, I think that's really respectable. I don't think it's... Yeah. 
I, I'm always mixed on how I feel about that because at the same time you're you're getting rid of possibilities for just music for the sake of music, you know, just for creativity's sake, you're, you're creating. But at the same time, it's important you stick by your guns and don't conform. You know, yeah. solid, we can have solidarity with um, uh, little Pete for, you know, sticking by his guns and doing what he wants to do no matter what. And I, you, that is obviously very commendable. In, in a, in, are you saying that, like, he's kind of, like, his own worst enemy? Like, if you worry too much about not being mainstream... Mm the question ah uh, yeah you know what i think that can be an issue and okay I, this is not to sound big-headed on ego it's, it's this uh, you know i'm not saying that because oh in this situation i do this you know right, right, right. but i think yeah sometimes you can get in the way of making music for the sake of making music i think sometimes things get too clouded in selling out yeah and there's the guy on youtube do you, finn mckenty do you know uh, of him? Is that punk rock NBA? That's the one. Yeah. And he's like, if you're going to sell out, sell out. Who cares? Selling out is just making money. At the end of yeah. the day, in the world we live in, you've got to make money to survive. And there's nothing wrong with making a little bit of money off a product. Sure, if you're, okay, if, if you are exploiting people for the sake of uh, earning money, you know, then that is obviously very bad. But making music for the sake of making music should not be reflected uh, should not mean it's bad if it right. makes money if that makes sense like pop music's good pop music slaps there is a market for pop music and not sure not all pop music is great but the majority of pop music slaps sigrid slaps um charlie x yet slaps uh justin bieber's new album it's so that good. is so so good okay i have this whole theory and this could like almost be its own episode but i have this whole thing that the Justin Justin Bieber's new album is such a parallel to Good Charlotte's Youth Authority and a lot of themes on there because okay. and they're slightly different but like his whole thing on that album is essentially like finding redemption and becoming a better person through falling in love and yeah. that's definitely a theme on Youth Authority. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, my dog is whining. He's fine. No worries, He's no just worries. eager for his walk. He's fine. Yeah. Buddy, come on. Here, let me give you a pet. Hold on. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah, I, uh, one thing, I also wanted to read this quote uh, from Pete once actually talking about Lil Peep in Rolling Stone. It was a big feature. And Pete says, he had this vulnerability to him in the same way that Kurt did, Kurt Cobain unapologetically that pe peeps music unapologetically traverse genres in a weird way that my generation and generations older than me probably would have been too cautious about yeah i th i think that sort of okay so my thoughts on that is yeah i think certain things thankfully and should are becoming more socially acceptable yes it's, it's we're we're less we're trying to be less divided as a people and i i love that we're more inclusive to um people with different uh, different gender different different present mm -hmm. how they present themselves we're, we're more socially acceptable we're understanding more about systemic issues uh, poverty race um it's brilliant this is all brilliant news and because we're learning to sort of live with each other and we've we got the internet we're more accessible i can talk to a a friend if i had friends i could talk to a friend in new zealand or or in india and i could experience their culture i could experience their music if i type in bollywood films onto youtube i could possibly get some trailers mm -hmm. and then watch films with art is no longer um art is no longer segregated and separated by borders of the world and borders of our own identities but now it is breaking through it is traversing walls of waves and oceans and seas and mm -hmm. and just different obviously i can't i'm trying to find a different word i don't want to keep using the same words different identities obviously just to join up for the sake of joining up for i don't know why i'm holding this just for the sake of joining up so that really badly but do you sort of understand what i'm trying to say yeah it's <laughs> there, yeah, yeah there we go. it's definitely changed and like i like the last interview that I did with an artist that was not 
for the podcast, um, which doesn't happen too often anymore. It's usually like podcast or maybe I'm hired to read a bio. Um, but I did this interview with an artist called Rents and he just like doesn't really exist in a genre, you know, like I guess That's you so could cool. say pop, but also like there's some rap influence, some kind of electro, like, you know, and you have a lot of people doing stuff like that now, which uh, you have hyper pop. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh, that is a genre. I got some hyper pop tunes on that, but I love it. Cause that's just, if it's good, if it's popular, sod it. It's still good yeah. music. Let's just make it like a hundred Gex. Um, yeah. Uh, just, oh dear. They slap. There are so many. I've got like so many hyper pop playlists on here. They're I want a hundred Gex Good Charlotte collab. Okay. So I was going to save this for later, but do you know Jerris Johnson? Oh, Jarvis Johnson. Jerris. Jerris. How do you say it? I might are we be talking about the, the YouTuber Jarvis Johnson? No, uh, oh, the okay. guy. Okay, so there's a TikToker. Um, I think it's Jerry. You, are you talking about the guy? So I think you're talking about the guy that like does the sort of reaction videos yes. to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So different guy, different guy, different okay. guy. Jerry okay, Johnson's okay. TikToker. Um, he started out doing like Linkin Park, making Linkin Park into trap beats. And oh, okay, like that. okay. And then all of a sudden he started blowing up and then he did a song with Papa Roach. So he's a hyper pop emo rap artist that just did a hype, uh, a song with Papa Roach. And it was a remake, uh, a remix of um, Cut My Life. In What's yeah, song yeah, yeah. Is it Cut My Life Into Pieces? I can't remember. My mind's gone blank. Last Resort, oh, yeah. How have I forgotten this? Oh my God. So they did a... Uh, a remix with uh, Last Resort and it slaps. And now they've done one um, with Bring Me to Horizon. So slaps. good. Oh I God. so want him to do one with Good Charlotte. It would. You have to check. Add this to your play. This is the. I know it was the last thing. Add it to your playlist. Okay. Joris Johnson, Papa Roach, Last Resort remix. It is so good. The guy is Amazing. bringing back rock. If and that is his whole thing. Is just making rock music. I feel like rock music became so pompous. It became so. Yes. Uh, you know, I keep doing this. Whenever I do the pompous voice, I always, <laughs> I always sound like a Tory. Oh, hello. Oh. But yeah, it became so pompous. It didn't become music for the sake of music that I think so many other genres are. You're seeing that with 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 um, trap music. We're seeing that with yeah. rap. We're seeing that with grime. We're seeing that with pop music. We're seeing that with um, uh, just like all sorts of combinations. It's no longer. I feel bad. I'm going to com. I'm gonna. Com commodify commodify my feelings for this it is mm -hmm. i feel bad i'm going to express why i'm feeling bad yes. in hopes that it reaches somebody else it's it's, it's less monetary game although it has a monetary output surely it makes sure. money and it makes lots of that's great it, but, it's like more genuine i think yes 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 that's yeah. it that is the perfect word that i was trying to find yeah, yeah. well i want to circle back to lil peep and the influence he's had on on good charlotte um, and the big thing to mention is, you know, the, the major influence and, and, you know, if you're a longtime listener of this show, you have heard us talk about this before, but, um, Lil Peep and, and his passing as well as, you know, the passing of Chester Bennington, you know, a couple months prior had a very big influence in the eventual making of Generation RX, um, yeah. which would come out not even a year after Peep, uh, passed away actually, now that I'm thinking about it because he, he passed in November 2017, and then Gen RX came out September 2018. Um, I've mentioned this specific interview. It's from a website called Lucy Sky Press, which, great name, um, that Billy did. I mentioned it uh, on an episode about actual pain. And Billy's just talking about, you know, how they were big fans of Peep, and they were working on a tour together. And he said that uh, when they did the cover, it was very dark and it was very somber on purpose. That really set the tone for Generation RX. After we finished that cover song, we were like, man, we need to do a whole record that sounds like this. That's why we touched on the opioid crisis with the name of the record, because that cover really set off us wanting to make this record. Um, and he goes on to say that, you know, it's, it's obviously very sad when, you know, people pass from drug-related issues. Um, you know, mentions Jimmy from Avenge Sevenfold, and he says that uh, it just comes out of nowhere. You wake up one morning and get a phone call, and it's like, hey, so-and-so is not here anymore. They died. That's always crazy. Stuff like that is hard to process. It doesn't ever really seem real when you hear about stuff like that. That same thing happened. Benji and Joel hit us up right away, and we were like, yo, I'm sure you guys heard about Peep. We want to do a cover song. 
we did the song regardless. And then we went to his family and said, hey, we did this. And she was really touched. She said, I want to play this at his funeral. So we went and filmed a live version of it that they could play it at his funeral. I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know it came about like that. But I think no, that's, neither did I until I, I, I yeah was reading the thing. It that's, that's so pretty. That's very melancholic. Very, yeah, but very. I don't know. No, I, I'm always lost for words, but especially yeah. lost for words for this. Yeah, um, there was an interview that the twins did with NPR, which you know, listeners, we've talked about this interview a couple times. It's a fantastic interview. I also love, by the way, that NPR had Good Charlotte on. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> would not think about NPR as like, oh, I'm going to turn on NPR and listen to Good Charlotte. Yeah. Um, but Benji just talked about how Peep was a fan and that we had gotten very friendly and we were really appreciative of the new sound that he was pushing. And just kind of overall, he was just genuinely kind of just a really sweet guy. And his mother actually had reached out and asked if we could try to do something special for the memorial. Uh, and et cetera, et cetera. It was a really special experience for us. The We, we talked about what the song kind of means already, I guess, but uh, in terms of backstory, I mean, we, we've gone over some of that for sure, but there is one more like interview I'll cite, which is there was an alternative press article which cited an interview that Joel did on Beats One. Um, and Joel is just talking about how they were talking to Peep's team about a t working on a tour together. Uh, mm. And so when he passed, you know, they already had a conversation started. Um, and even though they were in the UK, they wanted to put that cover together. He says, we put it together, recorded it, filmed it all in a matter of two or three days. Yeah. That's pretty good. Because yeah, it shows how important it was for them. As yeah. Well. Just, just get when they're so busy with touring as well and touring just takes so much out of you and the mm -hmm. fact they were able to do this yeah it really yeah. really shows a lot yeah uh do you have any other i mean you talked about the drums and the guitar but any other like inputs or thoughts you wanted to share about like the production or, or the arrangement of this i think turning a rap or pop song or whatever a popular song into a pop pop into a scene alternate rock song yeah is is very overdone mm -hmm. it's it's not saying you're in the wrong if you do that you know um we i've definitely done that i definitely do that a hundred percent i do that you know in, in bands and things like that it's but just because you can do it doesn't mean it's very good you know, a lot of bands do it. Um, uh, Our Last Night are very good at that. Uh, great however, example, some yeah. bands are really bad at it, myself included. <laughs> um, but Good Charlotte did it justice. They did it. I still don't know why I'm holding this. What is they that that you're really, holding? It is, it is, I don't, it's a toy. It's. I don't know if you play Monster Hunter. Mm -mm. Uh, you know, okay, it's, 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 a, it's just a, it's a Funko Pop. That's it. Oh, okay. That's it. That's okay. It. It's Funko one of those. Okay. I don't know yeah. why. It's, so, because Charlotte did it well. Yeah, they did, did it very really well. Did it really well. Considering that it's going to get covers in the future, it's going to get covers. It's had covers. Their cover stands out. Their cover is good Charlotte, but it's yeah. little peep good Charlotte. It's great. It's, it's, it, you know, we, good Charlotte, if you ask pretty much anyone in the world what genre good Charlotte is, they would say, oh, pop punk emo yeah. whatever yeah. um but i feel like this cover is a great example that highlights their like rap and hip-hop kind of roots yeah. um yeah which has always been a massive massive influence um for, mm. excuse me for good charlotte um do you have any like memories or stories that you want to share about awful things either like good charlotte's cover specifically or uh peeps version well, Little Peep's version was my first introduction to uh, Little Peep. Really? Well. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, as I said, I've always, I didn't, I didn't really know emo rap was possible or it was like, I, you hear like Jim Class Heroes, as I, I think right. you could call it as an early, you know, what could be emo rap. You know, they were on Fuel By, I think they were on Fuel By Ram, Ramen. Fuel By Ramen, yeah. Song by Fuel By Ramen. And, um, sort of i didn't really that you know it's early 
examples of what it could be but i think little peep really was like okay this is emo rap this is what we like and yeah. that was like oh damn this is a combination of two of my favorite genres rap and rock but in a different way not like chugging chords like you like um limp biscuit you know yeah. but more not bare bones isn't the right word uh but but just for a different style, a different, yeah. like the metal and, metal and rap, that's done, that's happened. But this was something different. And I really yeah. liked that when I first heard it. I was like, okay, I re- this is, this is, this is cool. This is cool. My, my memory about this, and I can't remember if this was the original live video. I think this would have been when the original live video came out. Um, I don't think this was a couple because a couple weeks after the maybe it was when the song because they re- released the recorded like audio a few weeks later but um i was writing for substream magazine at the time and usually when i would write like a news story it would be like you know 5 p.m whenever i get home from work and i'm kind of like all right like oh this thing just got announced today let me get a story up real quick but this one it was like either like almost midnight the night you know, it came out or it was like, I was up at 7 a.m. And I wow. was just like, I just have to get this up. Like, yeah. um, and there, you know, there were, there were a couple of things over the years I remember that I like really clearly remember, like, you know, writing a story either midnight or like 7 a.m. Just cause I'm like, I, I like, I want to be the one that writes this news story. Yeah. Like yeah. I have to get it out. Well, I think it's matter. important, you know, obviously good Charlotte has a, holds a special place for you mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. You, that was your, exactly time to like yeah um in terms of other good charlotte songs this relates to i think the obvious is just basically all of generation rx this led a big influence um so there was let's talk about there was this live video for this memorial um it was directed and edited by nick suchak i don't know if i'm saying that right um I don't know if they ever said where it was filmed, but I imagine it was like whatever venue they were playing at that night. They the just like it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I, I imagine it was just whatever venue they were playing at that night, like during yeah. sound check or something, or like. I imagine. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, every outlet was posting about this cover. Uh, Billboard, NME, Fuse, Fader, Spin, Kerrang, Alternative Press. Um, I post about it on Substream Magazine. You know, mm-hmm. everyone was posting about it, and as I think was the respectful thing to do in this situation. Um, you know, the the comments were. I don't think anyone was like looking at it critically, or like evaluating it. Yes. So yeah. much as okay, this is a thing that happened. It Here's why it's important. An emotional response. Exactly. Exactly. Um I want to read some comments on both the live video and the audio that Good Charlotte posted. Um, so on the live video, we'll go through that first. Camo Top Poppy said, This is like the full circle of my emo life. Fair, good. Lee Boy 2 said, I am 46 and have listened to GC for years. My daughter is 15 and had me listen to Lil Peep the other day. These names. These yeah. names. I know. Joshua James said, Peep loved this band and would have loved to collaborate. I know right now he's somewhere smiling and proud of this. A lot of comments along those lines. I think the band read these messages. I want to I wanna say the band scrolled through the comments on this one. Yeah. I know oh, some, I, some people don't read their comments to their own videos. I got a feeling they read the comments. I'm pretty sure. I, I think Good Charlotte does. Like, I'm pretty sure they just, they, they I know they read, like, reviews. Um, yeah, yeah. So I imagine they read a lot of the YouTube comments, too. Um, on the audio, we have Callum G, who says, Good Charlotte covering a Lil Peep song has to be the most emo thing that's ever been made. Um, Razor Biscuit. Limp Bizkit reference uh, said, I'm 41 and I know I wasn't Peep's demographic, but I absolutely loved his music. I came across him about eight months ago and I just got hooked. I'm still saddened over his passing, but it's great to know he was so respected by so many other artists. 
Um, and then Gnarly Thomas said, so glad Tracy's verse isn't forgotten about. Yeah. It's, I, it's, it also brings me back to Chester Bennington. As yes. Well, how Chester Bennington was, is, you know, is as we do a quote from here, respected by so many other great artists in mm-hmm. different genres. It's Chester Bennington, you know, made such an impact. Yeah. And it sort of, sort of reflects that it's sort of getting sort of similar vibes similar things because the, the two artists were both different periods different genres um they they had an equal they were equally respected in their mm-hmm. opposite circles and they did they had such a great impact yeah on music just in general it it's ugh, i don't want i i i'm trying not to go down to like too much of an emotional rabbit hole on chester right yes, but yeah it it definitely like i feel like chester's passing was and i wrote i don't remember where i even published this but i i did write like an essay about this that like i felt like chester's passing was like this really unfortunate reminder that even when someone is very outspoken and like direct about their pain and their lyrics they're still dealing with that. Like they're not past it. Um, Yeah. And I'll definitely, by the way, definitely going to be including uh, resources both in the show notes as well as the intro to the episode, Um, you know, different hotlines people can call, um, you know, for mental health, suicide and and addiction. Cause I think that's, you know, incredibly important uh, to share those resources. Um. The last like fan comment I will read was a thread on Reddit in r slash hip hop heads and terminally trill said, I think peep would have really liked this. He seemed very inspired by all these early 2000s emo bands. Uh, Real N shit 2K13 says, if I recall, Good Charlotte was his favorite band, so I'm sure he would have loved it. And then another user, Tritso, says, you were calling correctly, it was Red Hot Chili Peppers. He loved them, though. He put the anthem on a playlist he made for Spotify and tweeted them. There's always an argument. Always, no matter what post, right. always an argument. Right. Always right. an argument. Right. I was like, okay, but he literally, well, he said Good Charlotte was his biggest influence. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Close yeah. enough. Close enough. Um, Manny, so let's circle back to that question from earlier of what other Lil Peep songs should a good Charlotte fan check out? Okay. Ooh, I have a couple down. Yeah. Okay. The way I see things slaps really good. Uh, it's very, obviously very good. Uh, move on. Be strong. That's got mm-hmm. some, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, um, samples in there. Then you've got Cobain. I really like the main hook of that. I think the main hook from that. And I haven't. Uh, I've got another one uh, f- which is a bit. Um, so f- Little Peep, I know, did a song with X, and mm-hmm. Little Peep is very outspoken on women's rights, which I think is incredibly important, at the moment, especially in the pop punk scene. Yes. When, you, when you got like things like brand new and it's i think it's super important um especially you know, the pop punk thing can be so dodgy so i think it's just meant abusing their um their 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 uh social hierarchy with social being, hierarchy with yeah just taking advantage not just of yes. younger women but of women who look up to them Exactly. And then yeah. obviously that reflects that just on a generic man, we've had a case in the UK where we've had some protest for women's rights. Yeah. And which I think is after some uh, poor woman, I don't even say ever, 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 I can't say, I can't remember the surname, Sarah. She unfortunately passed um, due to a, a man taking advantage. Um, I think it's especially important to talk about that. I know he did a song with uh, X, mm-hmm. who I know had some issues we'll say with with that sort of thing on sure. the opposite side um and i know he took down some of the songs he had with x and i um, followed him but if we just purely talk i know it's very difficult to separate art for art from artists yeah i i'm not someone that can do that if you're able to do that 
I then definitely recommend Falling Down, especially the Travis, Bar- Travis Barker remix. He's, I talk about drums again, talk about drums once more. He does an amazing job on the drums in that song. Mm-hmm. It is a very mm-hmm. good song for what it is as being a good song. Obviously, yeah. you have to take into account some other things, but yeah. if you're a good Charlotte fan, you'll definitely enjoy that one. Yeah. Um, two, two that I wrote down were Life is Beautiful and Walk Away as the Door Slams, which also features Lil Tracy, who yes. is on Awful Things. I've, they've got to be a big friend. They used, must yeah. have been. Yeah, it looks like they did a little bit together. Um, so, Manny, I just want to know, like, how has Awful Things both – I guess you can answer this in respect to, you know, Peep's version as well as Good Charlotte's cover. How has that held up for you over time? Um, oh, uh, I think it's a genre that sometimes doesn't get taken very seriously. I know we've just established I'm not somebody who takes himself very seriously, so that's <laughs> yeah. fine. Me as an individual, that's fine. But I think for other artists... That don't get taken seriously even though they're trying very hard to produce their craft it's very very upset oh it's what's that it's it's sad boy stuff like yeah but it's 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 still a creative outlet it's still a piece of artwork and i think good shover good charlotte covering that was a was uh what's the word i'm always forgetting words man um just show the artist okay our music is liked our music it does have an importance you know it, it, it is not just for little, um uh not just as a response and a goodbye to little peeps passing but also a a i sort of i see you moment for the uh, other people in in um in the genre as well that okay you know our music it does is is actually music <laughs> if that makes sense definitely I think, like, as I listen to this, like, the more I've listened to this over the years, just the more I realize, the more I can see what an influence Good Charlotte had on Lil Peep. Yes. Yes. Um, Yeah. So, to wrap things up, uh, I like to ask everyone, what has Good Charlotte meant to you over the years, and how has that changed? I think... Hmm... My musical journey, I, I want to say, is is a nice response. I think it's I've bu- I've been brought up with different music from Atomic, you know, Blondie, um, Bill Withers of as we said earlier, Michael Jackson. It, there's videos up on YouTube where I used to do street dancing yeah. on the school assembly doing Michael Jackson things. Oh dear. Uh, and then obviously, um, Good Charlotte, as I say, and girl, girls and boys sort of singing that in the car at. That's what I want to say. It came out two thousand four. Girls and boys, two thousand two. Two thousand two. Blurman yeah. neck. I would have been five or four singing that in in the car, and then now, then in two thousand ten, playing in punk and hardcore bands. Then in two thousand fifteen, playing in pop punk bands, and then in two thousand and uh, uh, eighteen and nineteen, playing in post hardcore metal core bands to now doing emo trap <laughs> with a song covered by good charlotte it's yeah. on, on a podcast for good charlotte about little peep it is sort of a nice musical development for me yeah. it, you know they've been along for the journey of my musical understanding yeah it definitely seems like they have i love that and i love that you were so young and like remember um it's the only one I can remember. <laughs> it's the only one I can consciously remember mm-hmm. singing that song. I I remember wow. consciously singing that song. I think was, when I was five, I think Spice Girls was Spice Girls was my big thing. To be fair, five. Spice Girls song slap as well. Let's yeah. be honest. I was Baby Spice for Halloween one year. It was a good time. Um, well, do you have any last words about? awful things about Lil Peep, about Good Charlotte, or about, you know, yourself and, and Keeper? Um, I think if you, if you liked the Good Charlotte one, it's definitely continue going down because there's some absolutely banging artists. Yeah. Like, there's so many good artists in this sort of emo thing. If you're looking for more, like, Good Charlotte, you've got, like, Dying in Designer, is 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 pop punk and it is the purest form of pop punk mixed with 808s it sort of sounds like 
Point North. Obviously, check out Point yeah, North. Yeah, yeah. Straight up pop punk band with some 808. So give us, snaps. give us some song recommendations Ooh, by these artists. Okay. Jerris Johnson. You got to check out. I know I said it before. Jerris Johnson. You got to check him out. He is 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 feature with with Bring Me and uh, with um, uh, Papa Roach. Is brilliant. It's really good. You also got to check out 93 Feet Smoke. They did. He did a cover of all the things she said and some brilliant screaming in that scar lord slaps if you're a fan of little peep guardian garden sorry garden brilliant convolk brilliant kenny hoopla and little tracy like i know i know, I know when you think of pop punk now you think of travis barker <laughs> that, but, that uh, like the, the i feel like the stuff travis barker is doing now is almost like it's like almost like a new thing like a new wave of it Yes, I think it's very important. Oh, it's, saying, it's always a slight joke at the same time. There was, do you know the band Counterparts? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so Brendan, Brandon did a TikTok and it was like, okay, we can, can I come up with this new pop punk idea? Okay, it's going to have power chords, yeah, yeah. Feet Travis Barker. Oh, but everything he does t- turns to gold. The songs he has with Little Tracy and Kenny Hooper slaps nothing nowhere brilliant artist brilliant brilliant artist obviously you've got mario judah he slaps 100 gex slaps and um, there's a very small artist called only friends and he had his song codependency it sounds like chester bennington screaming on it, it, wow. it it's really good really good really recommends only friends like there's so, oh, there's so many good ones then okay so if you're specifically little lotus little lotus is a great representation because his early songs sound very similar to little peep he sort of started defining himself with the more pop punk roots he now has very blink 182 with pop punk bands his band is a screamo band who the guitarist was a producer for little peep and it is basically really? just like it is proper more screamo sort of that early 2000s it's called um if i die first check okay. out if i die first really good band Amazing. Well, thank you for all these recommendations. I I, I love um, <laughs> updating the playlist and getting like so many new new things to add. We definitely have a lot to to add uh, for this. Um, thank you so much. This has no been worries. thank thank you for this, having me. This has been really great. Um, where can people keep up with you on the internet? Ah, uh, so um, uh, Instagram, get uh, guess I'm keeper. Facebook, guess I'm keeper. Twitter. I mostly share, I don't really do a lot. Of, I mostly share and like things on Twitter. Okay. Like, <laughs> political posts and things like, yeah, philosophy and things like that. Sort of um, book, book. So if you want Twitter for some hot, spicy takes, check out the Twitter. Probably not the best idea. Definitely Instagram, Facebook. You can check me out on Spotify. You can check okay. me out on SoundCloud. I will say definitely, like, I feel like Twitter is where the podcast has its most active audience. Um, but we use Instagram, Facebook, too. There's a Facebook group and everything. Manny, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been so much fun. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Listeners, thank you for tuning in to this episode. This has been a bonus episode of Generation GC. Last week on our last regular episode, we talked about Harlow's song from Cardiology. Next week on our next regular episode, we'll be talking about a song from Youth Authority. My name is Molly Huddleston. I'm your host. You can follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod, P-O-D, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also follow me, Molly, at M Huddleston, M-H-U-D-E-L-S-O-N, on Twitter and Instagram. Please make sure to follow and subscribe to Generation GC wherever you listen to the podcast. Rate, leave reviews on Apple. I love seeing that. I want to know what you hear of the, what you think of the show. And join the Generation GC fam Facebook group and tell your friends, you know, that that's the best way to spread the word about the show is word of mouth. Thank you all for tuning in 